When I was little, I didn't care what I wore, be it pants or dresses, as long as it was comfortable. However, as I grew older, I started to understand the link in our society between girls and dresses, women and pink. From that point onwards, pink was my least favorite color, and it still is, and I hated dresses. For a while, blue was my favorite color, not just because I liked it, but also because it was associated with boys. Now that I'm more comfortable with my gender identity, I understand that was my way of distancing myself from anything related to my sex. Though my parents always tried to be supportive of any sexuality, they didn't know much about gender. Neither did I, actually, until I found a community of genderqueer and transgender people, strangely enough, on YouTube. Everyone there was so supportive and eager to learn more about different sexualities and genders from others. And for maybe the first time in my life, I didn't feel different because of my identity. That's why it's so important for people to be both educated and supported surrounding gender and sexual identities, because nothing feels better than being accepted for who you are by the people closest to you. Though being accepted as transgender or genderqueer is fairly new, it has existed for centuries. One of the most famous, pe one of the most fa famous transgender people in history in the US was Kristen Jorgensen, who had sexual reassignment surgery in 1952. She was featured in the New York Daily News and quickly became widely known. She recorded several songs, as well as working as an actress and nightclub entertainer. She was one of the first people in the world to have male to female sexual reassignment surgery. But while Kristen Jorgensen might have been one of the most famous, she's by no means the first. Some Iranian and Akkadian texts from as far back as 4,500 years ago show proof of transgender or transvestite priests. Some of you here might know the reason I'm so passionate about gender identity is because I myself am non-binary, as well as a, a, aromantic and asexual, but I'll explain more about those later. I came out to my best friend in November and to my parents soon after. If anyone's wondering, non-binary is an umbrella term used to describe many different gender identities. Non-binary simply means a gender identity that doesn't fall in the usual male slash female gender binary. Others under the umbrella term are gender fluid, clues in the name, bigender, which is similar, or agender, someone who identifies as having no gender at all. There's even a non-binary flag from the top, yellow, white, purple, black. Many non-binary people use they, them pronouns, but not all. I myself use they, them, as well as he, him pronouns. But using he, him pronouns doesn't make me male. Pronouns and gender are not the same. So always ask for someone's pronouns and their gender, and never assume based on what they look like. In the past, sex and gender have been used interchangeably. But as time moves on, it's important to understand the difference between the two. Sex refers to biological sex, such as chromosomes, but gender is far more complicated. Gender can be used to describe someone's role in society, known as gender roles, or it could be gender identity. Sometimes someone's birth sex doesn't line up with their gender identity, and these people might refer to themselves as transgender or non-binary. But while sex is clear-cut and non-changeable, gender is a spectrum. Usually, sex is determined by chromosomes, but this is not always foolproof, as sometimes men have two or even three X chromosomes, and women might have a Y chromosome. Babies are even born intersex, where they might have both reproductive organs, and their parents might be required to choose a gender for them at birth. Gender is different. A gender role we've created in our society is women wear dresses and men don't. Just like gender identity, this is a social construct. The idea that dresses, a piece of fabric we use to cover our bodies, have a sex assigned to them is frankly absurd. <laughs> Someone's sex can never change, but gender is whatever you want it to be, no matter what others tell you. Did you know that different genders and sexualities even have different pride flags? Many of you might be aware of the rainbow pride flag, but there are many others. One day, as I was sitting in my room, wondering what I should do for my quest, it dawned on me. I should make different pride flags for my quest. There are quite a few, so I haven't been able to make all, but I tried to make as many as possible. First, the non-binary flag. The definitions of all these sexualities and genders are on the screen. The yellow represents people who falls outside of any binary. The white, people who have multiple genders. The purple, people whose gender falls between male and female, and black, people who identify with no gender. Next, the asexual flag. 
The black represents asexuality, the gray, demisexuals and others under the umbrella term, the white, allies, and the purple, the community. Next, the aromantic flag. The dark green represents the aromanticism, light green, the spectrum. White, platonic attraction, gray, demiromantics, and black, the sexuality spectrum. Next, the pansexual flag. And no, pansexuality doesn't mean attraction to pots and pans, but simply, <laughs> but simply being attracted to all genders without preference for sex or gender. The pink represents attraction to the female spectrum, the yellow, attraction to the non-binary spectrum, and the blue, attraction to the male spectrum. And last, but by no means least, the transgender flag. The blue represents trans men, the pink, trans women, and the white, intersex, or people who are transitioning. After my speech, I'm giving away these flags to anyone who wants them. So if you want one, you can come off and take one during the break. I didn't have enough fabric to make all of the flags, so I'll show some of the other ones on the screen here. Next, the lesbian flag. Unlike the other flags, the lesbian flag doesn't have a specific definition assigned to each color, but it can represent gender nonconformity, serenity, peace, community, and independence. And finally, the bisexual flag. The pink represents attraction to the same gender, the purple, attraction to both, and the blue, attraction to the different or opposite gender. Some of you might be confused on the difference between gender and sex. The difference is simply that bisexuality is a being attracted to two or more genders, and pansexuality is being attracted to all genders without preference for gender or sex. But helping gender questioning people is not just about education, it's also about support. Studies have shown that transgender and genderqueer teens are 2.5 times more likely to get depression than cisgender teens. Cisgender means someone whose gender is the same as their birth sex. Bullying, unsupportive friends and family can all lead to many other common mental illnesses, which are also more common in transgender or genderqueer teens. If you don't know how to support your friends, your family, your kids, ask. Most people will be happy to tell you what you can do to help them. Even just using pronouns correctly can be an amazing experience. The first time someone used my pronouns correctly, I cried. It meant so much to me that my best friend understood and supported me enough to use my correct pronouns. It's so very important to know that you don't need a label in life. And if you're un uncomfortable in your current gender, ask a friend or family to refer to you with different pronouns. If you're also uncomfortable with that, you can use the website Pronouns Dressing Room, to, and it will refer to you with different pronouns or names of your choice. And most importantly, find a community. Find someone to share your experiences with, whether it's online or in person. Hopefully knowing more about different genders and sexualities will help you on your journey to understanding yourself just a little bit better. As most of us know, community is very important to humans. We are not meant to be alone, thereby making it supremely important that we are welcomed and understood. That's why being accepted by your community as whatever sexuality or gender you are is so important. That's why I chose to do this quest, so I can help educate people about gender and hopefully make you all feel more open about talking about gender and sexual identities. Thank you to my teachers for helping with my quest and special thanks to my dad for helping me build this flag stand and for moral support and for my best friend for listening to my speech on repeat. Thank you.